Right, now when you're making figures for whirly gigs, uh, you're going to need some timber, obviously, or wood as I call it, and there's various sorts you can use. Now, you can use plywood, this is just an off-cut of plywood, it's about 5 sixteenths, it was part of an old box. Um, it's fairly good quality, but it's it's got a few worm holes in, which won't matter because you can work around them and it's going outside anyway. Now, plywood is okay, it's fairly strong because the grain goes several ways, especially this stuff, which is um, probably about 9 ply, I would think. But the only problem is, it will, after time, if the water gets into it, it will split open. And I've not yet found a plywood, even ones that are meant to be outdoors, that will stand to the weather. They do eventually go. So, if you're going to make it out of plywood, it won't last all that long, unless you keep painting it and keep it in good condition, which I don't usually. I just do them, put them outside and leave them. When they wear out, I just make new characters for them. So you can use plywood. Uh, you can use softwood. Softwood's got, that's a bit of piranha pine and off cut. Um, softwood is easy to cut and easy to work with. It splits fairly easily and it's not brilliant outside. Again, the same as plywood really. This is a bit of European redwood. Um, again, that's about the right thickness for the main figures on some of the whirly gigs. Um, but it's not perfect for outdoors. It will not last. Once the water gets in, it will rot very quickly. Now, one I, what I do, I don't buy wood. It's it's a long time since I've actually bought any wood. I scrounge it, uh, stuff that people are throwing away. Especially prized, there are old items of furniture like chests of drawers and things. Um, you can get things, this is a piece of oak, lovely piece of wood. It's about three eighths of an inch, I suppose. Five sixteenths, three eighths of an inch. Sorry if I'm talking imperial. Uh, I do metric, but I prefer imperial because that's the way I was brought up. It's, it's oak and... and uh, you see that's about, what, five and a half inches wide, the usable part of it, and that's perfectly good for whirly gigs. I use it for general fret work for making things, but again, it's perfect for whirly gigs for arms and things, and being oak, it's got a fairly long life, even if the paint um, peels off it, it'll still last. So that's very good. This is a, another side of a drawer. Um, it's not oak, it's a, some kind of soft wood. I think it's a copy of, of oak. Uh, it's got a few splits in, but you can avoid those. The advantage is there's, no, there's not much uh, in the way of knots or anything in it. It's a straight, fairly straight grain, and you can use that. Um, and I do. And this is a bit of sort of mahogany. This is from the place where they made old... Oh, those were some drawers, I think. I took apart and planed down. We've got a bit of elm there, which come from a log which I cut up. Again, it's got a few worm holes in, but elm's pretty good out, out of doors. What I do, I always keep a... This is one of my boxes of trays. In here, there's all little offcuts. Now, that little bit there, that's a little bit of oak. Now, most people would just throw it away, I suppose. Again, that came from an item of furniture. But any little bits like that, if it's hardwood, I prize them. I don't throw them away. Obviously, if they're, they're no good, I will put them in the, the box for the firewood. But then again, it's not wasted. It goes on the fire, uh, the open fire. Um, these are various bits of wood, off items of furniture that I've scrounged off relatives when they're... Usually they've got something that's made out of decent quality wood and they think, oh, I don't like the look of that. And they go to Argus or Ikea or somewhere and buy some cheap, cheaply made item of furniture made out of MDF probably because it looks nice. And they chuck away a lovely piece of old furniture. And uh, if you don't want it, some of the wood in it is marvellous. Uh, that piece there, I got these out of a skip. There was a lot of this and uh, it's ash. And strangely enough, I was cycling past a... Uh, a transport depot a couple of years ago and there was a skip outside and I had to stop because it was full of wood there were plywood sticking out um, pieces like this um, only small pieces but to me it's ideal for fretworks it's good quality birch and there was this ash and uh, I thought blimey I'm gonna have some of that it was on a Sunday afternoon so I filled my saddle back on my bike with a lot of these little panels as much as I could get in there uh, and off I went. Anyway, the following day I, I found the name of this company and I phoned them up and explained, you know, what I wanted. And they said, oh yeah, coming up yourself. So I took my little van down and I filled the van up with the stuff and I got loads of this, <coughs> excuse me, and this. And it turns out this ash is actually what they were using in Morgan cars, uh, handmade cars from Malvern. And they actually use ash for the dashboards and things. And these were the offcuts. And this company had the contract to take all the offcuts away. And all they were doing was burning them. And uh, anyway, I, I, I explained that I used it for hobbies and things. And I made little medallions for charity out of the plywood, which I do. And they said, oh, help yourself. So I took a load of this wood. And little bits like that, which most people throw away, are quite handy for whirligig figures. Because ash is pretty good. 
Um, there's all just various bits and pieces. This is only stuff like legs off a table, and, and I keep it because sooner or later it'll come in handy, and it's far better than buying stuff. It's probably better wood anyway if it's um, been in furniture for a long time. So that's the materials. Um, for for example, uh, this is another thing you can get. They made a lot of shop fittings. Um, used to have these sort of little oak drawers, and they're all box comb joints on the end. And it was lovely oak wood. And if you can get some of those, they're marvellous for doing fretwork or for making whirly gigs and things. Um, I'll just show you this little piece here that I've been cutting out um, this morning. This was a. Uh, pop them in there. This was a, a piece of a, a drawer out of an old wardrobe. I don't know what wood it is. It looks sort of like beech, but I don't think it is. And all I've done, I've just planed it down, made it a bit thinner. And then I've, I'm cutting this um, Whirligig character out of it. As you can see, I've, I've cut the main character out. I haven't sanded him down or anything. And um, the two side pieces that I cut off, even they won't be wasted. Because what I've done, I've run them through the surface saw to make them somewhat thinner. And then I'm going to make these little arms. You see, that's just about big enough. If I put that on there and draw around it, uh, I can cut an arm out of that so it won't be wasted. And the other bits that, that are no use, I shall put them in the firewood box and that will go on the fire tonight if it's cold. And the same with this piece, I can do the other arm. I can't find where it is. Oh, here it is. Here's the arm. This is one I took off that whirly gig I did the other day that's broken. And I'll just draw around that, you see. Draw around there and then I can cut an arm out of there and again the rest will go in the waste wood box. When you're doing these characters, <clears throat> what I do, you can make them any shape you like. Um, this was the character off my blacksmith whirly gig that I've covered recently. And you saw this one because he was all rotted away. And all I've done, I just got a piece of paper and I put him on there roughly. And I drew the rough shape out of the character on the on a piece of scrap paper, recycled paper obviously. Uh, uh, and I drew the character out on there. I thought, well, I'll make him a bit different. So instead of making him a bald head, what I've done, uh, uh, given him a fancy hat, and I've made his nose longer and his chin sticking out, and I've made his bottom stick out, and I've also given him a fat tummy as well. So he's basically the same, so he should fit. So I thought I'd have some variation, and uh, I can make a different character. And you can change them all you like. So having done that, all I did, I got my piece of wood. Obviously, this is Nick, so I'm playing this down. And then I got, just in case you don't know, uh, I got the character on the wood like that. I got a piece of carbon paper. Now a lot of people today probably don't know what carbon paper is, but it's what we always used to use before printers and, and electronic devices came out. And just place the carbon paper on the, on the wood. I, I'm not doing it properly. And then you just draw around it like so. I'm only doing this for younger people who probably don't even know what carbon paper is, but we used to use it all the time. And then, hey presto, there's the shape on there, and you do the whole figure. This is what we always used to do with fretwork patterns, but sadly today, it's, it's one of those things that people don't use. I mean, you would put probably scan this, you could scan it into the computer, which is what I would normally do, to be honest. What I would normally do is scan it in, and then I'd print a, a line drawing of that out, and then I'd just glue it onto the wood and cut around it, and then sacrifice the pattern each time. But in the old days, of course, we used a bit of carbon paper. That way you kept the pattern, and you could use it again. So that's how I do that. So I'd say I've cut that out, and the next thing I'm going to do is cut the little arms out for it. Uh, and a bit later, I'll show you the other characters as well.